Good morning. Uh, this is Barbara Richardson. I am the chair of the marketing committee of Brand USA, and I'm uh, pleased to welcome all of you to our meeting, this morning's meeting. Uh, we have much uh, to discuss. A lot of work has been done uh, since we last met in July. Um, so I'm calling the meeting to order and um, would like to uh, let everyone know that the board members joining uh, us and the committee members joining us um, include Randy Garfield, who is uh, with us, George Fertitta, and John Edmund. And if I could, uh, as a privilege of the chair, congratulate John on being selected as the State Tourism Director of the Year. So we're very pleased. Uh, to, to be able to send congratulations and to have uh, John with us here on the committee. Um, and uh, here in the room, staff joining us today, um, we have our President and CEO, Chris Thompson, our Chief Communications Officer, Ann Madison, Chief Marketing Officer, uh, David Whitaker, CFO, Don Richardson, Tom Garzilli, who is our Senior Vice President of Global Partner Marketing, Karen Grunberg, who's the Vice President of Marketing Programs, Brian Watson, Manager of Information Technology, Jake Conti, Director, he is our in-house counsel, as well as George Schutzer from Patent Squire, Patent Boggs, partner on there. And sitting also in the staff is Carol Rehm, um, who some of you have heard before on the call, the Vice President of Research and Analytics, and Roberta Hatchett, who's our Director of Advertising and Media. So um, as our first order of business, if I could uh, ask for a motion to approve the minutes. So move. Our second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. The motion passes. And I'm going to turn it over to Chris Thompson to give us a brief update. Okay. So uh, thank you, Madam Chair and committee members, and good morning, everybody uh, on the phone. Uh, <coughs> We're very excited about this meeting and excited about uh, the board meeting that will happen at the end of the week. Uh, we've got a lot of great stuff to bring forward to finalize the marketing plan and then to also uh, finalize the business plan. But here's just a couple quick updates I want to give you before the start of this meeting. One is uh, you'll hear in our finance meeting report on uh, Friday and then at the board meeting that uh, as it relates to our ability to uh, bring $100 million to the table in uh, industry contributions to match <coughs> the $100 million the federal government provides, we're on target to hit all those goals, uh, $45 million in cash, $70 million in in-kind. You'll see a list on this um, uh, slide of the major contributors that, that came in uh, that we received during Q, uh, Q3 of 2015 and a bunch of in-time that's queued up to be able to submit to the Department of Commerce for a final match. So very excited about the fact for in this second year when we've had to hit $100 million uh, industry contributions that we were able to hit that. Next slide will give you an update on our giant screen film. Uh, Tom certainly has done a great job in helping shepherd this for us. Um, the film is nearly complete. We're in the final stages of production. We announced uh, here recently that the voice for the film, the voiceover for the film, will be Robert Redbird. So we're very excited about that. He certainly has a great track record with uh, being a, a friend of the great outdoors, and uh, he's certainly a celebrity that'd be well recognized. Uh, we we did a screening of the 12-minute film at the ESTO uh, meeting here recently in Portland. Uh, we actually also there was a major conference of the uh, Giant Screen Cinema Association, which is all the cinema owners and anybody that has decisions about what's played and where, and we showed actually a full-length version of the film in its um, near complete stage and was received very, very well. Uh, we're planning to premiere the film in February on the 10th here in D.C. at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. Uh, as a result of that meeting, we would be finalizing all the theaters and where it's going to be run uh, around the world. We'll probably have six other major premieres around the world and then certainly we'll be activating it around everywhere else. And you'll see a list there of the major sponsors. Again, uh, this is just a summary slide as it relates to the film. Uh, we're certainly appreciative of uh, Expedia Media Solutions and REI stepping up and have some others that we look forward to announcing real soon. Another thing that's a spin-off of this, uh, while we were shooting, we took a lot of the footage uh, in conjunction with the Gillery Freeman Films and the Travel Channel, and we're producing <coughs> television shows that are currently running uh, domestically and then will be continue to run internationally. And these are uh, as a total of eight, right, uh, Tom? Eight, eight. Uh, television shows that actually feature certain uh, of the national parks in a little greater depth than a 40-minute film could, uh, and we're excited about the extension of that. 
Uh, U.S. China Leadership Summit, we just held that last week. Uh, first year that Brand USA was responsible for it. Uh, thanks in great part to our uh, friends that the U.S. traveled and put it on for the first eight years. Our uh, major hosts of that were uh, in conjunction with Visit California and uh, Los Angeles. Uh, chairman um, Lee Jean Zhao uh, is the new chairman of CNTA. There were eight provincial provinces represented at the meeting. We had 190 delegates, about half from China and a half from the U.S. Uh, tremendous response. We thanks to the team and her team uh, who had a major play in, in uh, staging the event and all of us that participated in it. Chairman was very, very excited, uh, and we think that relationship with CNTA is going to be a valuable relationship moving forward. Uh, and lastly, uh, we also conducted recently our India mission, thanks to Carol Ream, who took a leadership role uh, as it relates to senior staff. You'll see the breakdown there. Uh, we we um, uh, increased focus for, I think, the second year on the MICE segment, which was very, very well received, and then we continued the uh, major part of the mission. Uh, the traditional part of the mission in the three cities in, in India. Tremendous uh, support uh, from uh, the industry, industry uh, who continue to uh, support this for now the third year in a row. It's one of our most successful missions and, and one that we certainly uh, look forward to taking it to other markets. And then uh, World Roots is coming up. Uh, this is the major show that uh, where the airlines and the airports come together and in growing numbers the destinations that represent the cities and the states and it will be held in Durban, South Africa. We have some major partners that are attending with us. We look forward to advancing the discussion. We realize that air service is a tremendous local decision, but uh, since a lot of that is regulated at the federal government level, we certainly feel like we should be part of the conversation and provide a great opportunity for industry to maximize that. And with that, Madam Chair, I'm happy to turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, so in this next segment, we have um, so much information. I think it's going to be so valuable to all of our partners. Uh, uh, across the country, and uh, David is going to walk us through uh, the further work that's been done on the marketing program. And we talked last time about uh, creating a plan for each individual uh, countries. Um, and I remember Karen taking us through the big markets that we were in. And now I know that the team has gone much deeper and 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 has has a lot more analytics and a lot more information to share. And, so if you would do that. Right. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm especially pleased that Karen Gruenberg can be on the call with us, as well as Roberta Hatchett and Carol Loon here in person. Uh, as you can appreciate, uh, I'll answer all the easy questions at the end. <laughs> if there are any difficult questions, I'll throw that to Karen mm -hmm. and Carol and Roberta. Obviously, uh, as we put a plan together, there are a variety of areas that are building into that plan. We've talked about some of these things in our previous meetings building up to this. I will also warn you, uh, those of you participating in the webinar portion, we're going to race through a number of these slides, but all of these slides will be available and posted and be able to be shared. So I'm going to give you a very, very quick and high-level overview uh, in building off of uh, from previous meetings and then also uh, a pathway moving forward. As we go to these slides, obviously any market and planning starts with both assigning the resources, targeting those markets, uh, a major commitment that Chris continues to emphasize in terms of creating opportunities for our partners, aligning our internal and external resources, and to continue to find ways that Brand USA and its strategies can create that lift, especially in developing new markets and new customers in existing markets, uh, and be upstream, if you will, so that we're providing more value and more opportunities to our partners. Uh, we all spend time in how we prioritize markets. Uh, Karen, in our last meeting, walked through some of the internal exercises. A lot of this is research-based, and Carol Reen has in the past and in the future. We'll talk about some of that research technology about how our brand can behave, and of course, there's going to be a creative checklist as well in terms of building on our previous successes, the assets and the resources that we have. Content is king, of course, and we have tremendous content with new content on the way, but it's also a lot of being very flexible uh, and make sure that we are adaptive uh, in this new dynamic environment that all media is now purchased and placed in so that we can respond to the behavior of our customers and, and make sure that our investments are truly worth it. Uh, we talked, and Karen walked you through in the last meeting uh, how we tend to, to, to prioritize our markets. We use our internal ver verbiage of prime volume markets, uh, the targeted volume markets, and of course, new volume markets. These markets are not a surprise. They've been uh, on many, many charts for many, many months. 
if not years. In both uh, our five, uh, four market streets, five markets alone generate over 67% of all of our visitors currently to the United States. And we are targeted to produce about 67% of all the new visitors in our path to 100 million. And you can see the percentage change, change for next year. Uh, and obviously, uh, even in lieu of uh, you know, the emerging exchange rate issue, especially in Canada uh, and Mexico, uh, uh, what I do want to emphasize as well is that those projections for 16 are percentages increases over 15. So to some extent, we are any flatness that we're seeing this year, we're hoping to build on uh, in the future year. So there's a little encouragement in, in those storm clouds. And then China, you know, which has been averaging 15, 20, 18, 19 percent growth, um, you know, being somewhat uh, uh, temperate in our approach with a 15 percent projection coming off of the years where we've seen just phenomenal 19, 20, 21 percent growth. Even in our uh, target volume markets, and again, these five countries generate about 17 percent of all of our current overnight visitors. Um, and we have great enthusiasm in markets such as India, which is to continue to grow. Uh, in fact, for the first time, be over a million next year. Um, and other markets uh, that have tremendous opportunities for growth. And then lastly, five markets that are not new to us. We've been in France in a variety of ways in Sweden. but really now a, a, a all-in approach in terms of consumer marketing for both those two countries and Colombia and Chile, two countries, of course, South America. Uh, emerging as a, a real growth opportunity. You can see the ambitious growth that we're projecting, especially in Colombia and Chile. And these five markets in total in the next five years are projected to increase as much as 50 percent in total. And, uh, and while that's only 4 percent of our current visitors, that represents almost 8 percent of our growth. And so if we're going to get to 100 million, not only do we have to maintain our current core markets, but we need to find ways, whether it's these four markets or other markets in the future, to fuel new growth to add on top of our existing business. And then, of course, there are the markets that we continue to work in, with, especially led by our trade and media relations efforts, uh, and an expanded uh, effort with our Visit USA committee uh, that Ann Madison has talked with us in the past about, and more information on that in the future uh, really built out in our business plan. Uh, but in all in, these, uh, these 14 countries and regions added with our 14 uh, consumer markets, now we're going to be active in, all, in, in literally 40 countries around the world next year. Of course, when you target customers and the segmentation that we go on, uh, we use an awful lot of research, and there are some fundamentals to that research. We all talk internally and within our own organizations about segmenting the leisure, business, travel, friends, and all that, et cetera. Some of the work that Carol Reen has been leading us on is really talking about what motivates the traveler uh, and then making sure that we are sending messages and getting in front of those consumers with messages and imagery that help trigger that desire to consume what we're offering here in the United States and our partners are offering. And there's a variety of ways we do that. One of the things that is emerging both, both on our base, which has given us a great roadmap for the future, are what we're calling the five core U.S. trip personas. And, I, and Carol doesn't need any more speaking engagements, but she's traveled literally around the country uh, providing uh, updates at IPW and at other major seminars where we're using our research uh, and really building out a pathway and a message strategy so that each of the uh, obvious trick personas can be utilized in a way that's relevant in the time, in the market, in front of the right audience. Um, of course, we can't be cognizant, I mentioned earlier, we have to be cognizant of some of the possible barriers, and clearly in countries, in fact, this chart just illustrates what our research is telling us in the last two flights of research from June comparing it to the answers in August. And you can see an increasing, if you will, uh, concern or an increasing awareness that the affordability, especially in markets like Brazil and Canada where the exchange rates are currently a lot less favorable than we've enjoyed in the past years, and Mexico inclusive. Not so much an issue for our European friends, but clearly as we look at these markets, uh, something that we're going to have to keep an eye on is, uh, is, the, is the exchange rate. That said, we never want to put the United States on sale. We never want to discount our great product and our partners. And so the value proposition of one's consuming behavior really has to be a, an all-in approach, and it can't just be based on price point. And in fact, any good value proposition takes your existing uh, success, and we use the great outdoors as one of those phenomenal examples, especially 
uh, with the great success of the film and all that we're going to be experiencing next year in the 100th anniversary of our national park. But we need to take that platform along with our culinary platform, our great outdoors platform, our road trips platform, and we need to make sure that those are all uh, working together to create an overarching brand value proposition. Because simply the one platform using the great outdoors as an example, there are other countries that have outdoor offerings, and that in a singular um, vernacular cannot perhaps outweigh the, the value proposition, especially some near markets like Mexico and Canada and others who have to travel far. And we need to create increasing value for our, for our customers. One way, we, one way we do that, of course, in the whole challenge of what we're doing to move forward is to create a, a perception and a reality that everything you're into and that everything you're interested in learning about, consuming, experiencing in the United States can be achieved. Uh, and quite frankly, you can get real value for your, in this case, your buck, yen, real, or peso. And we call it uh, proximity. And that's one of the greatest assets that our country and our partners have, both individually and with one another. Whether that's at the city level, the state level, the region level, uh, the, the availability of great experiences and great resources and great attractors uh, very near to one another. And that proximity will be a, bit, a very big part of our strategy moving forward, building on our past success. And we'll take things such as the great outdoors and we'll package that, if you will, or build upon that opportunity. You cannot almost get to any of our great national parks without, of course, first traveling through a gateway city as an international traveler. And it's that relationship between urban escapes and urbanity is not just found in the largest cities in our country. Uh, great restaurants, great nightlife, great uh, shopping, great museums, all those things are in, uh, in, in large cities and mod moderate sized cities and charming small cities all throughout our country, all very much ap uh, approachable and as part of the overall experience, especially with the great outdoors. And it's that uh, proximity that will be a big, big part of our driving for focus in terms of our message strategy moving forward. And it's also a bridge strategy. A lot of discussion later in this agenda, you'll hear us talk about uh, our ongoing search for a new uh, ad agency of record, a new creative approach to really on past success. And so but that's a year away in terms of uh, actually testing and, and placing some of that media and market. And we need to be prepared working with our existing partners who've been providing great work for us and our internal staff to, to make sure that we get to 2017 by having an outstanding 2016. So that bridge strategy really is about using proximity, proximity, especially in, in, in lieu of things like perception of cost and, and value of cost. And really, as we all know, time and the experience of something new are as much currency today, especially with the, the younger millennial traveler, as, as some of the great resources and decision making that was done in the past. And it's that combination of these things, the proximity to one another, the value that you can receive during that time you're traveling, and the new experiences that will create the excitement, both for our core markets, our core customers, and those new customers that we're targeting. And that will be very much a part of our creative strategy moving forward. There are a lot of models out there on the path to purchase, the travel funnel. Those are all rather linear in, in the concept. In fact, technology is changing. Uh, in fact, there's no longer a linear approach when we look at uh, motivators and, 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 and trip personas and that the triggers and the research that's done when people are considering a trip. Uh, we'd like to think, though, that one of the real fundamental roles that Brand USA can play, especially using the technology and the media that we're going to be focusing on, is what we call our sweet spot, that center of gravity, where we have a tremendous opportunity on behalf of all of our partners who are both investing with us and who are expecting great things from Brand USA. And it's in this area of exploring the possibilities and choosing to come to the United States and aligning that with what is uh, the passion and interest and the behavior of our customer. And that's sort of the center of gravity that we're going to focus on. And with that, uh, we're limited, obviously, in some of our proprietary information. Uh, we don't want our competitors exactly knowing what we're doing too soon in the process. But obviously, as we look at an overview of our methodology for investment, there's four obvious uh, we want to target those markets that we've already identified. We want to have a global approach. We want to make sure that the channels we use are both cost effective as well as great flexibility. And we want to make sure that we're distributing dollars that are working hardest for us. The great news about new technology, especially digital and social, is that you can literally monitor as you go. And, and those messages and those, those uh, uh, creative approaches that are resonating, that are getting great activity, and, and we're seeing that from the behavior of our customers both online and in their own research 
we can then continue to fine tune and target messages to them uh, that are working in the right market, in front of the right audience, at the right time. Of course, we all know the different variety of channels that are out there. Uh, above the line, the traditional mass marketing uh, is increasingly uh, now being supplanted and enhanced by online video, display advertising, serving up to consumers as they're searching, including our own website, which we'll talk more about later. We've taken the world of OTAs and twisted it a bit. We call them online travel experts because the, the, tra the trip advisors of the world are as much an influencer as some of the traditional online travel agencies where people are not only looking for data and information and cost, cost and value, but they're also looking for what others are saying and what's trending and what's popular and, and what's being shared as the hot, new, exciting destination. And we want to have a global base. This is a chart that shows, obviously, uh, put together to some extent using the, the, the traditional funnel of the travel life cycle, those markets such as Japan and India where they're still very much, uh, even though we have great success from those markets, still very much in the dream phase uh, and in the market uh, such as Chile and Colombia which would be new to that mix. But also now more and more, and Karen Gruenberg mentions this almost in every presentation, uh, a phrase that we've coined called active consideration and that's literally creating a greater sense of urgency, a greater sense of relevance, and making sure that we're serving up information, whether it be in our core markets or some of our biggest traditional growth markets, uh, but really creating a sense of urgency, a sense of awareness, a sense of excitement, and monitoring their behavior so that we continue to invest in those programs that are working online and other platforms. We do that a variety of ways. Obviously, we continue to evolve, and we're going to build on the past successes. But and the great results of some of our the return on investments that we're <coughs> so proud of at Brand USA. But really moving forward, uh, using a communication system that we're touching on today in terms of monitoring what's, what's working, uh, investing in those things channel by channel, uh, and having a year-round base approach, especially in some of these new markets that we want to expand. And we can do so very affordably. Again, much more detail will be presented in the weeks and months to come as part of our business plan. Uh, but if we oversimplified our investment strategy, quite frankly, it would be utilizing these uh, obvious channels, the the line, online video, <coughs> which, as you can see in this chart, we're expanding greatly in our investment in advertising, especially supported by a new web strategy, a new, uh, new digital strategy. Using our uh, online travel experts, which are a big part of our, of our partner program, uh, the social space continues to evolve. Uh, and remember, these, these offers, this 19 is really just our, our U.S., what we call our, our Brand USA campaign. It's, it's, of course, enhanced and leveraged further by our uh, multiple million dollar partnership programs and the programs that our consumer partners are, are investing in. Um, and then, of course, in the last meeting that we had uh, in our public session, uh, we used uh, Karen Gruenberg walked you through all 14 countries, and we have uh, and we'll post uh, information on this as we move forward about each of our countries. Canada is just using this as an example. Of course, we look at both the planning and, and consuming life cycle of what time of year that those decisions are being made. And we look at how we can continue to move people into the travel funnel, if you will, to really get them to activate and travel. And then, import, more importantly than ever, share those experiences. They become ambassadors for our country as travel consumers who've had great times here, shared those experiences, and we need to provide them all the resources to allow them to do that as they share with others, which increasingly is a way in which travel is being shared, researched, and consumed. In wrapping up each of these countries, both our prime volume markets, the variety of tools that are used in the investment strategy, both with uh, other line, display advertising, and in fact, our largest markets like Canada, UK, and New Mexico, it'll be an all-in approach. Other markets, such as Brazil and China, will continue to, to make sure that using the consideration phase, educating them, again, with a variety of different channels at their disposal. Some of the other markets, we have to be a little bit more fine-tuned, especially, uh, but again, very mature markets where we have great opportunities to, to send messages that are relevant. And then in some of the newer countries, not necessarily new countries, but new customers from those countries, especially the newer Japanese traveler. We talk about whether that's the girlfriend and getaway, the younger uh, traveler, adding to and supplementing the, the, the core base of, of the traditional travel agent, tour operator uh, generated traveler. Very much still in a dream phase. 
Uh, and then in some of the new growth opportunities, again, Korea is a great example. South Korea is a wonderful example of using social and digital media in a very tech-savvy country. And some of our new volume markets, again, building on what we've done in Sweden and France, we're really going to be all, all in, all online, all year, uh, as they continue to consider reasons for coming to this country. And these things, we had a little bit of fun with our new Sargay Mercados, those new markets. It's not lost on us that South America has tremendous potential, and it won't end with Colombia and Chile. In fact, some of our USA partnerships are expanding greatly in the Southern Cone and in Central and South America throughout. But it's a combination of those things that take what we're doing now, including the great success of this past year with the roadshow program platform and the culinary platform, and the great excitement that we're having for next year's big film activation. Uh, using that multi-dimensional approach, especially in bridging, as we continue to evolve, looking at those international uh, return on investment uh, media placements, uh, a whole revamp. Karen, uh, I won't give her the time today, but we've talked an awful lot about our affinity programs and our programs with our partners. Those programs actually now have to be aligned as in market, uh, uh, supporting both our investments and our partners' investments. And then lastly, where we're heading, we'll talk soon and in our December board meeting and in our ongoing partnership discussions, including next year at IPW, we'll be talking about what's next, what's the next big thing. Uh, we're going to build on the successes that we're investing in this year, continue to build out our market segmentation using the, the great foundational research we have with ongoing research in the future, making sure that we customize those programs by country. Uh, and at some point, we even are going to be having discussions with you know, eight to ten of our largest partners so that we can make sure not only are we leveraging our resources to support them, but also leveraging their resources with us uh, so that some of the largest partners investing in, in international marketing have a chance to partner and collaborate directly with Brand USA. And Madam Chair, I may stop for a moment and uh, uh, with our staff. I'm not sure how we answer questions. Well, the, of course, well, the committee will yeah. call. And then Brian will later on. Later in the yeah. public. Yeah. So let me turn it over to you and ask for some questions. Well, first, thank you very much. Um, uh, committee members, uh, are there any questions or comments that you'd like to offer? No, once again, it's just a great way of walking through a very complex and very in-depth program in a very simple and uh, understandable way. So David did a great job on that. Thank you. Yeah, this is Randy. I echo that and also the strategic approach at this point in our evolution to what I think is really um, a masterful plan. Yeah, it's, it's, it's more in depth than anything I have ever seen by any state or city and in the countries that I've worked with you know, most recently. It, this is more in depth than I've ever seen. Very, I, I think you know. Kudos to you, David, and the team. And also, I would also just add that a lot of the work was done in a very compacted time frame right, too. From um, you know, bringing it all together, we had the information, pulling it all together, the strategy development, the profiles going forward, the footprint, all of it was was fast tracked too. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, obviously. Her team couldn't be more important, and I'm especially pleased that Karen Gruenberg is on this call. She has put in countless hours. Tom has laid a great foundation in some of the great work that Karen and Tom and Roberta have done in past years, but really now working along with our research findings to really carve out a pathway forward, and a pathway forward for our partners. So I could not be more excited. Madam Chair, if you would, uh, I also want to say that uh, watching the process work certainly uh, leadership team and in the marketing department has uh, built upon the success that we've had in the past, but uh, I think the delivery of this product uh, really require, has engaged the entire organization cross-departmentally uh, because you can't make your market allocations without the support from uh, John and his team. You can't you know, deliver the plan and, and, and the part that uh, Ann's team plays in it, and if you really look at whose fingerprints are all over this plan, uh, certainly, uh, marketing departments bringing forward the marketing plan, but I think you'll see when we bring forward the entire business plan that it was a total team effort that is like nothing I've ever seen, and I, and I appreciate uh, uh, the, the committee recognizing uh, the body of work because there was so much that went into it. Um, and at the same time, as we segue to the next topic, 
there was a lot of work also going on on major uh, requests for proposals which um, are being put in place to support this plan and to carry out this plan. Um, so if we could move to that topic and um, kind of and give an update on uh, all the work that happened this summer. You know, it's a very exciting time for us, and, and I'm going to tackle uh, a few of the first uh, RFP updates that are, that are central and, and integral to the marketing initiative, and Ann is going to join me in, in a couple of other key RFPs that are very much part of our communication uh, and sharing that information. To start, to start, of course, uh, we will now be uh, sharing with you, and, and again, uh, anyone on the call can appreciate that, A, we have a, a board meeting on Friday, and so we're, we're going to remain confidential at this point until we get to our board meeting and be making recommendations to our board for them to deliberate on Friday, including the board members on this call today. And then equally important, uh, of course, going through good governance and good uh, uh, procurement, we'll be following the, the, the well laid out uh, steps for uh, intent to bid and contract negotiations, et cetera. But having said that, I could not be more excited. I think I speak for, for all of us in terms of the response to the RFPs, uh, and, and the deliberations that went on internally, and some of the real talent that came forward raising their hands as one part of the Brand USA uh, success matrix. So I'm going to start with a, an update on um, the agency of record. We had a great response, obviously, and again, this, this was a bid that first had been uh, launched uh, in the fall and then was somewhat uh, postponed as we reorganized internally. But um, we had 23 intents to bid, 13 formal proposals, all outstanding proposals. We, of course, worked with the committee that you see there. Uh, and I want to thank those members around the table and, and others who were part of that. Uh, Barbara, I know you had a chance, obviously, along with Chris, to sit in on the final presentation. Um, with our digital agency, we had, again, outstanding response from the industry, some very, very talented uh, agencies submitting with great experience. Uh, and we even, in fact, a, a special acknowledgement to our chair of our board and our vice chair who had some of their technical expert, experts helping us with uh, some of the technical uh, aspects and sitting in on the process. And then the marketing services agency, that RFP, uh, six intents to bid, three formal proposals submitted. We especially know how important the marketing services uh, program is at Brand USA with our partners. It's, it's pretty core to our partner value. That said, um, uh, Anne is going to talk briefly about our next two, or uh, it's there on the slide, uh, you know, the 33 intents to bid for a corporate website. Uh, it's a very much an important B2B website as well. And then, of course, uh, the marketing uh, communication to the Brown agency, which we're going to get into some more detail in a moment. Well, let me just say a few things about that. So the corporate website agency, I'm very pleased to announce that we have selected an agency, we have contracted with an agency, and we have already begun um, some really good work with that agency, and it's Insomniac. I love the name. It means they're going to work 24-7, um, which means they'll be up at the same time everyone at Brand USA is. That, um, what we're looking at is really making our site much more interactive, particularly where our partners are concerned and where we report results. So we'll be doing two things, providing a lot more from our research standpoint that our partners can be putting to use, uh, showing more about what our successes have been at Brand USA, and then also having the port, uh, partner um, portal within that that's password protected that our partners will able, be able to go into, be able to see uh, very soon thereafter or during the portions of the programs that they're working on with us, what those successes are, what the progress has been, uh, and they'll, they'll be able to report that back to their various boards. So we're really, really pleased about that. Uh, the next one is in process and we hope to be able to announce um, the candidate for that in the next month. We are currently going through uh, interviews with those candidates. I'll turn it back to David. Yeah, just for the record, Ann moved on me, so when I looked across the chair, I saw an empty seat, so I apologize, Ann. It's okay. You tricked me up there, and, and uh, I'm on my side. Um, Madam Chair, I, 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 we're very excited about Friday's board meeting, including the, 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 the public session, and uh, we'll have some great information to share on Friday. Yeah, it's very exciting, and I think besides um, thanking the staff for all the hard work over the summer, I think it'd be appropriate also for us to recognize um, and thank the industry for submitting so many great proposals and um, um, the, all those proposals that made the, the process even more difficult, but that's a great time, and we appreciate that. 
Well, what was impressive to me was the privilege of representing our country. And I know we feel that at Brand USA, but almost to every bid, they were thrilled with just having an opportunity to help uh, contribute to the greater good and representing our country. And we're all going to be better for that. Okay, so I think um, that's good timing now if we have all of the agencies in place working to get that done because we, you want to do some work with the URL strategy. I'm going to turn it over to Anne. And David and I are both going to speak to this, but uh, something that we're in the process of is beginning a transition to a new URL. Um, and I'm going to give a little video here, and hopefully this video will play through and give us the rationale for why we considered a change. So as you can see, there is a rationale for why we are doing this, but the key issues really became two things. One, the, well, we love the logo, and Discover America has some great, great goodwill behind it, and we'll continue to use it. Um, it did not really speak to what our core mission is, and that is to get people to come here, to visit the United States. Um, and the other piece was really a geography issue. The Americas is really comprised of more than just the USA. And we feel that as an international organization, marketing to international travelers, that we really needed to be sensitive to that. Uh, there are a couple things that we looked at when we went through this process. This has been something that we've looked at since the beginning of the year. I'm not going to go through all of this. It will be posted on our website. But essentially, we looked at a number of different URLs in order to look at this. And while the brandusa.com will continue to be our corporate site because we are marketing the USA, there are a number of um, other URLs we could have considered. Uh, and as you can see, as we went through this, the bottom line became visittheusa.com has a very strong clear to act, clear, um, call to action. It aligns directly with our mission. And as we found through the research of, you know, there are various people out there who own a number of URLs, website addresses, and so forth. We could really own that URL in the various geographies. And while you can't own a hashtag, we um, did see that there were not a lot of um, uses out there on social channels using the, visit, the hashtag visittheusa. Um, then very quickly we thought, well, you know what, we really don't want to make a lot of changes. We've been very successful here. Uh, and we have a clear brand identity with the USA logo that we have. So it works well with our current logo. We're able to retain the inherent value of that logo and our identity with travelers and how they recognize us, the awareness that has built, built up um, since our beginnings in our marketing programs. And then as we go on, the timing really aligns with several opportunities. Um, the first is that 
Um, the timing is um, with our new mission and vision statement that we've communicated. We are in the midst, as, as you can see through um, all David's conversations and, uh, that he's had and built through our marketing plan that is the very beginnings with our, our brought forth here today. And then the RFPs. We've got a new agency that will be coming on board once we announce that who will really be able to, uh, to um, do a very smooth transition. So we have a very strong platform in order to do that. Um, the objectives for this, it's a very soft approach. Uh, we will we begin registering the URL. We've got all that, as you can see, the check mark on that. We've developed presentation and communications materials in June and July, and we started to communicate that we are moving to this in October. We announced it at a major industry uh, event at the end of August called ESCO, which is put on by the U.S. Travel Association. And now comes the accelerated approach to this, where we will prepare the launch um, with various marketing and communication um, statistics, David and I will be working uh, together to make that happen and we'll, uh, then, of course, promote it through our planned channels. Okay. Uh, q and It's on. It's on. Committee members, do you have questions? Comments? Nope. Okay. Don't forget to the... So I think uh, without, if that's uh, a wrap on that, I think we're ready to go to um, questions that we might have. Anybody submitted any questions? Operator, if you could provide instructions for anyone who's on the line or who is on our webinar for how to submit questions. Thank you. If you would like to ask an audio question, please press star followed by the one on your telephone keypad. Again, that's star one. We'll pause for a moment to compile the Q&A roster. One moment, please, for the first question. Our first question comes from the line of Matt Steiker. Please proceed with your question. Mr. Steiker, your line is open. Can you not hear me? Is that better? Yes. Hi there. Sorry about that. Uh, good morning, everyone, and, and thanks for the great presentation. Um, obviously, tremendous amount of thinking, tremendous amount of work here. Just had one quick question. Um, in, the last, in the very last part, you indicated uh, the word current as you were talking about the logo. And I was just wondering, is there, are there discussions taking place about changing that logo, or is that mark staying the same, and all you're thinking about right now is the, uh, is the URL changing? This is David Whitaker. I'll, uh, I'll answer initially and then open the door for other comments. I think we're, in the beginning we're obviously focusing on, on the, the URL and for all the valid reasons that Ann Madison articulated. And as she indicated, our logo, the, uh, the, you know, the, what I refer to as the bubbles, if you will, uh, there is great equity uh, built in, in Brand USA and in our partnerships around the country with Brand USA and in our intergovernmental relationships with Brand USA. And so uh, today, I don't envision that uh, changing you know, dramatically. Great, thank you, David. I, I I agree with that. I think that um, I think that that gives every single destination um, and attraction and restaurant it, it it makes everyone feel like they have a place as part of the logo and therefore as part of what you guys are doing. Thank you for that. Again, to ask an audio question, press star 1. At this time, there are no further questions. Okay, I want to thank everybody for participating um, in today's um, uh, meeting, which was just so full of information and um, great intelligence work and really reflective of so much work that has gone on um, this summer. And um, I know that the board will be meeting, and I'm sure that it will be as well received as it was here. So I want to thank the team here. Um, with that, if I, I uh, no further business, I am going to officially adjourn the meeting. We're all adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.